we're looking for a frost date around March the 23rd will be our last frost. Today's the last planting day of this cycle. The Moringa have sprouted, so I'm gonna go ahead and take the chance to get the ones that have sprouted into pots so that these Moringa have a better chance at uh, getting up and getting a good start for the next 90 days as we try to keep these Moringa trees alive heading into the uh, frost, freeze, frost free dates. So what we're gonna do is look at the Moringa and find one that has a taproot like so. These pots are just filled with a regular potting mix. I'm gonna take this. I'm not gonna touch that taproot right there. That's a very fragile thing and we do not wanna disturb that at all. Just pull the soil back a little bit, drop it in, cover it up, maybe a little tap and then uh, we're good to go. So what do we do with the perlite after we're done sprouting seeds on it? Well, if it's still clean, you could sprout some more seeds on it, but I'm going to dump mine into my soil mix to get the seed collection down to a single tote. And um, that's sort of my active planting section. This is what we're going to be working with. Chives will be something that um, we start once we get into the root phase. Chives. Just a little look-see at some of the seeds that I've got that we're, I'm gonna grow this year. We're gonna grow this year. Um, I tried these last year and I did get one fruit, but it was late in the season and it wasn't very well taken care of. So I am gonna try to grow bitter melon again with a uh, Baker Creek order. This is the uh, free seed that I've got. We will start some of this. Um, I'll do some research. This may be something we start here in January. Um, you know, I'm a echinacea junkie. I love echinacea. So we've got this blend of echinacea flowers to plant. Um, a second kind of bitter melon. I'm looking for a variety that works here. I would like to grow bitter melon. You plan on, uh, this is some of the stuff I bought for last year, but it didn't come in in time. And so buckwheat cover crop, I've got some areas that I'm gonna cover crop this next year. Here's some other buckwheat. Can you imagine a field of this in the late season after the uh, main crops come out and you've got a field of this buckwheat in bloom for the bees? Isn't that amazing? So two flowers I plan on growing this year that uh, I just couldn't live without. When I saw them in the seed catalogs and that's the African daisy. Um, never grown African daisies before. I have grown some daisies. I would like to get some African daisies started. Here is a yellow and orange mix, but the stunning one I'm about to show you is why I chose African daisies to begin with. Check this one out. If I, if I can grow anything similar to that, I'm excited. Um, I just think it's a beautiful flower. The blue center in, is outlined, trimmed in gold. It's just a beautiful looking flower. We're gonna try to grow some of these this year. And then the other flower that I chose to uh, work with this year is salvia. We've got a blue salvia. We've got a queen mix salvia. We have this blue Monday salvia and also a Cleopatra's mix. So we are gonna try to grow quite a few salvias this year as well, hoping to get a seed stock. Because salvia is a frost hardy plant, ranging in New Mexico and Texas. I'm thinking that hardening it off is gonna be a little easier because we can, it won't shock so hard on those cool days. Find some good warm days with some mild sunshine and get them outside and begin that hardening off process. And um, they can go out a lot earlier than some of the other things. Since we already have our Sharpie that we're gonna be using to label, we can just put in that small indention for these echinacea seeds. Just 
just gonna put two or three on the surface. We're just gonna scratch those into the surface. These little teeny seeds, some of them need light to germinate. Some of them don't, but these smaller seeds, we just need to scratch into the surface. We decided to put the moringa in our nasty bathroom. It's warm in here and uh, the citrus are doing well. Continuing to pollinate as these blossoms open. So uh, join along as we uh, continue to plant diversity in both food production, flower production, medicinal herb production. January the 10th, it's 32 degrees and sunshine, which means it's bitter cold with any wind and we do have a slight breeze. We've got about five days until we get a full moon, which is where we're gonna change over from planting above ground crops and root crops. 15th and 16th, we get a really good day to plant flowers. I'm gonna start a bunch of more flowers then, but until then, we're done planting it's outside work and it's cold. I guess the next step is to finish the clean out down here. Been busy, still lots to do. Is there other hazelnut? So cold out there, sometimes you just gotta come in and have some coffee. It's too cold to be gardening. So uh, this is ready to start uh, putting some compost amendments on. I think I'm going to go grab the leaf mold. Uh, I know the barn clean out in the spring will go here. And the chicken clean out in the spring will go here. So this is a bed that we will develop this year. Uh, probably won't plant much, if anything, in it. Just getting it ready for either the fall or next season. Here's another one that's just slightly ahead of that one. Uh, I don't think this one's gonna be ready to plant this season as well, unless I do a lot of uh, <laughs> amending. Most of the amending is going on in this bed. Uh, right now I'm protecting my onion sets from the chicken vultures. And they've already picked up the beets that I put down here, as well as the carrots and other stuff. Uh, I can start some stuff in the cold frame, and we'll do that with some root crops coming up later. So any time I spend down here in the food forest is time well spent. This is not a thing that has to happen overnight, but the more time I spend down here, the faster this process will develop. So if you plant the wrong kind of bamboo, or the right kind maybe for your project, uh, this is a runner kind. It goes and spreads through rhizomes, and it is a chore to keep up with. Slow and steady wins the race. Took all that down. Got a place, there's elderberry there. And punch a hole out. That tree's got to come down right there. And that tree needs to come down. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode and uh, thanks for stopping by. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up, a like. Or we will continue to be gardening by the almanac. Uh, for the rest of this month, we've got one more planting day where I'm gonna put out some spring color. Uh, this is mostly flowers and herbs, things that are gonna stay smaller that I can get out quickly in the spring. They can handle that cold weather. Uh, later in the month, we're gonna start some beets, some onions, some carrots and things like that. Come back and uh, let's garden together. It's on seven. Why are the endings of these things so difficult? Edit and piece this all together so that it makes some sense for my way out of this video. Y'all have a great day.